We've all heard of electric vehicles and how they're going to change the world, but the EV industry is hitting some snags with battery production. Could there be a better way forward for cars? And could that be electrofuels? Let's explore the pros and cons of the two. First up, why consider an alternative? Electric cars have gained a lot of popularity in the consumer automobile industry. Tesla is literally selling more cars than they can make, and some of the biggest car manufacturers in the world are exploring their own options. But the wide use of electric vehicles has been exposing some of the weaknesses of this model, and most of them have to do with the batteries. Right now, electric cars generally use lithium-ion batteries. If that sounds familiar, that's because those are the very same kinds of batteries used in phones and laptops, only way bigger. The fact is that lithium-ion batteries weren't a perfect solution for small electronics, and the limits of the tech are being pushed at car scale. So what are those limits? Let's break it down. These things are heavy. One does not simply make a giant lithium-ion battery and stick it in a car. Electric vehicles instead use battery packs, which consist of multiple lithium-ion cells that are all connected to each other. In order to give a car the kind of range a gas-powered car would have, you need a big battery pack. Tesla's battery packs can weigh up to a thousand kilograms. That would be a huge portion of a gas car's total weight. The electric motors used in these cars are mighty strong. They have to be. But you can understand the physics dilemma that this weight issue causes. As the battery gets larger, the car gets heavier, and the motor needs more torque to carry the weight. But a stronger motor requires a bigger battery, which will make the car heavier. And on and on the cycle goes. It isn't just the battery that adds to a car's weight either. The car still has a body, seats, and electronics, and you have to consider their weight too. You'd eventually hit a wall where the motor's efficiency can't overcome the weight of the car. Our goal with these technologies is to make cars greener and better for the environment, right? That does mean we need to have an alternative to every type of vehicle. From sedans to SUVs to semi trucks we think that as you go up heavier classes of vehicles, the relationship between motor power and battery size will become unsustainable. Next, handle with care. Texas is currently experiencing an extreme heat wave that their power grid is struggling to cope with. Both the grid operator and Tesla themselves have requested drivers to avoid charging their cars between the hours of 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. On one hand, this frees up capacity for air conditioners at homes. On the other hand, charging a lithium-ion battery while it's hot is bad for the battery. Have you ever gotten the warning from your phone that it'll refuse to charge while the battery's hot? That's annoying when it happens to your phone, but it would be even more annoying if it happened as you refilled your car. We're not used to that kind of unreliability from our cars, but that's part of the reality of using lithium-ion batteries in our vehicles. And there's more. Cars are pretty safe these days thanks to all kinds of advancements in technology. A car could get absolutely crushed in an accident and the driver would walk away from the scene with just a bad fright. But would that be the case in an electric car? We all know that lithium can make some fireworks when exposed to air. There was a reason the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 was banned on flights. We're sure that companies take great care to secure their battery packs, but some accidents can be really brutal, and the battery just adds an extra layer of risk. So basically, lithium-ion batteries are more finicky and more dangerous. We don't mean to say that we should go back to the old planet-destroying ways, but this is yet another reason to consider an alternative. But before we talk about e-fuels, let's address the biggest downside to batteries. So, how sustainable are batteries really? A lot less sustainable than the industry would have you believe. Better than fossil fuels is a pretty low bar to cross, and there are many concerns in lithium production that give us pause about the whole idea. Lithium, like a lot of the resources we use, is mined from natural reserves. And like the mining we do for other resources, the mining process can be extremely damaging to the environment. Mining lithium from a volcano in Nevada sounds cool but the Native Americans living in the area have sounded the alarm. The mining is expected to leave behind a lot of waste while using billions of gallons of the groundwater. Not only will the water be lost, but what's left behind may be contaminated, impacting the health of the people and agriculture in the area. And it's not like lithium is used raw in batteries. The lithium is shipped to factories along with other resources to be manufactured into batteries. These battery manufacturing facilities aren't greener than any other kind of factory. What's unique about lithium is is that tendency to cause fireworks, which makes safe storage and shipping yet another logistical concern. Now onto the case for e-fuels. Electrofuel, or e-fuel for short, can be a confusing term. It makes you think of the electricity that's powering Teslas and other electric cars. But it's actually a new way to make the very same kinds of fuels that are used in today's cars. This clearly has some advantages. You probably won't be able to use e-fuels in the car you have right now. Gasoline isn't a fuel that can be made using those methods. However, 
However, the engine of an e-fuel car would be quite similar to the cars we have today. It would simply be a different kind of internal combustion engine. The good news there is that all the advancements that the automobile industry has made over the centuries can continue to be used to make higher performance and higher efficiency engines. On top of that, the problems that come with lithium-ion batteries can be avoided with e-fuels. We're not saying that e-fuels would make electric cars obsolete, but they're a compelling alternative that could exist side by side with EVs. An Obama-era government agency called ARPA-E was a major driver in researching and developing the concept of e-fuels. They came up with some interesting results. A team at the University of Massachusetts Amherst was able to synthesize biodiesel using microbes. ARPA-E has moved away from e-fuels though, which sounds like a bad sign. As of 2020, Porsche and Audi have made investments into e-fuels as well. The Taycan and e-tron lines from these respective companies are some of the most popular electric cars out there. But these companies do also make sporty cars for driving enthusiasts, and that crowd would do anything to hold on to their ICEs. Neither ARPA-E nor the automobile industry have managed to produce any real results with e-fuels, though. That begs the question. Finally, where are they? If e-fuels are the silver bullet to solve our climate problems with cars, why hasn't this been the path chosen by the industry at large? Well, it's simple. E-fuel manufacturing makes no sense. When producing an energy source like batteries or e-fuel, the process only makes sense if the energy that fuel can produce, or energy output, is proportional to the energy that was used to make it, which would be the energy input. With e-fuels, the production process is very energy intensive, and the resulting fuel can only produce half of the energy that was used to make it. Cost is a factor too. The equipment and facilities needed to produce e-fuels are pretty pricey, and it will always be the customers that have to pay. The International Council on Clean Transportation estimates that we could be paying around 3 to 4 euros per liter in 2030 if e-fuel production was ramped up. According to their analysis, lithium-ion batteries are four times more efficient in terms of energy output. In fact, with the ongoing shock in oil prices, many drivers are looking to electric cars as an alternative, while e-fuels haven't really come up. That could change. Maybe Porsche and Audi will find a way to make e-fuels work for our cars. Maybe e-fuels can help in some cases where batteries aren't an option. One example of such a case is super heavy vehicles like planes and ships. We've kind of made our peace with the fact that electric planes and ships won't be a thing. The European Federation for Transport and Environment actually called for advancements in the production of e-kerosene for planes in 2021, though they did also acknowledge the potential for air pollution there. But the fact is that all of this talk of renewable fuel sources is for the sake of the climate, and that crisis will not wait for us to figure out the most efficient way to make e-fuel, or how to safely mine lithium. The planet needs us to stop using fossil fuels ASAP, and at this time, lithium-ion is the best way we know to do that. That's it for our renewable energy talk today. Do you think e-fuels are a medium-term future for us? Or are lithium batteries here to stay? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to like, share, and subscribe.